Hi everyone, welcome to UI Devices. So in this video, we will be seeing what is polyfill and how we write the polyfill for the array method. So, so this this is the one question mostly asked the in the interview. So uh, I have given also a couple of interviews over there. They asked me to what is polyfill and what is the use of polyfill and when we should write the polyfill. So and uh, write a polyfill for some of the array methods. So this is how uh, multiple questions can be asked related to the polyfill. So in this video, we'll be creating our own for each method with the help of the polyfill kind of. Okay, so basically the polyfill is nothing but the piece of code, which is, uh, we can say that the, suppose you have written one array method or something, and that array method is not supported to the older browser. So in that case, what happens? So that method would be not be supporting over there. So it will break over there. So in that case, we have to write our own polyfill. So depend upon the uh, earlier we use IE. So most of time the array methods ES6 feature over there not supported. So at that time we have to write the polyfill for that case. So with it, we can able to do the similar kind of the functionality in the older browser as well. So that is the polyfill and we can write a multiple polyfill for our own custom method. Suppose I have this array over here, name array, so I have created it and whatever methods we have array methods. So we can write all this with the polyfills as well. So in this video, we'll be seeing the for for each. So how can we do the our own, how can we create our own for each and uh, what is the, how we can do this? First of all, and uh, what is the basic requirement to write our polyfill? So, first of all, let me tell you one thing. So, whenever uh, right now, what is happening? What we are doing over here? So, we have one array, and we have to override the method of the array right now. Okay. So, we have to bind our custom method to the array method. So, in that case, you might heard about the prototype in the JavaScript. So, it helps us to bind the property to your object or uh, array or something. So with it we can do. So we have to override our array property prototype and with it we are able to do that. So first of all let me show you what is the syntax of for each first. Okay. As soon as I write for each like this. So, so you can see it takes one callback. Okay. And callback can have a value in index and array or anything. So we have to pass one callback to our own custom method as well in the same way. So we'll see that how to do that. So first of all, we have to create our own custom for each method first. So that will receive one callback and we will pass that callback to your properties with the properties. So let me show you how we can do this. So first of all, we have to do one thing. Let me do this first. So we have already an array. Okay. So now we have to do two things over here. We have to first bind our array property method with the prototype. Add that array dot property. Okay, and I can give my any name. So my for each. Okay. So, okay. so this is how we can bind our method. So this is the one method we are binding with the help of the prototype to the array. Okay, so array kind of the we have the abstract over there. So whatever the array property we do, so it has the in, in, inherited properties of the array every time. So uh, as we see that uh, the forest takes one callback, so we have to create one callback function over here. So we will create this callback function back, and we will assign that to it to the forest. Then so we will create that, and uh, you uh, you have seen that. So each time whenever the forest method get executed. So it runs for each element of the array, correct? So let me do it like this. So this callback will run every time for each element of the array. Suppose if I uh, do only value, so it will take only UI. Then the next time it will take dev and the third time it will take guide. So in that case, your callback is picking each value of the array. So for that case, we have to write our own kind of the thing over there instead of internally it is working. So we have to write our own for loop method over there. So it will be binded to this property basically. We can say that the this this means what? So whatever we are passing over here, so this has a reference over there. This so this is nothing but the 
constant uh, the array in that case. So whatever array we are working over here. So what we can do over here. So inside this, we can write one for loop. Okay. And it will be zero and less than. I will print that uh, this as well. What it is referring in some time. We'll see that. And plus plus. So now I have to pass one callback over here. So I can create any kind of the callback function and uh, I'll show you how to call this. So in this case, this index of i. Okay. So this is how we do this. So, uh, okay, so this is correct. Okay. So this is how we can call it. Okay. So now we have created this for each now. So I need to call with it name dot this one okay and one callback function we have to pass that would print that value okay so let me create one kind of the my console only let me create function my console it is taking one parameter as a x and it is printing over the coming so okay so now i will explain what we are doing over here Okay, so same way we are doing over here. If I go again, let me show you what is for happening over here. Okay, so we have created our own for each kind of the my for each, and we are passing one callback. Okay, and callback has the references of the name. It should be names, not a name. Okay, so it would be it is coming from here only. Okay, so let me remove this circle because I want to check. So this is how it would call over here. So, and you can see the output as well. So, UI, dev, and guide. So, let me explain first. This means what over here. So, we can do one thing. I can debug it as well. Let me show you. So, how that references are working, let me show you that. Okay. So, let me do something again. So, it automatically run. Okay. So, what will happen over here? Okay. So, this is the array. Okay. And this is our custom function we have created and added over there and we are passing one callback over here so this names means it is referring to this names now so if i go here and if you see at the local this we have this index ui dev guide so what happening over here so this is referring here this names properties basically because we are binding that to the names so this because of that it is atta attaching to that so let if i print this only over here you can see Okay, so you can see this means UI dev guide. So we are passing that value to our own custom function, okay, the array method with the help of the prototype. So this is how we do for the for each. So we have multiple array methods. So sometimes uh, interviewer will ask you to create our own promise. Suppose you have three promise or uh, in the one of the interview, he asked me to create a promise or method. So he asked me to create three promise and pass three promise to the your custom promise. So how can we do in that case? So we will see that video in uh, in the next video maybe. And uh, we, I will try to cover the other array methods over there as a well. filter we have, then reduce we have, then map we have. So I will try to create those videos as well. So, but let me know if you have any question related to this or anything related to your interview process or any interview question you might be having the problem. So this question I asked on the Instagram, my page. So over there, a few of the people asked me to create a, our own polyfill method. So based on that, I have created this video. So let me know if you have any problem. So thank you. Bye-bye.